Quantum Computing Incorporated is on a mission to accelerate quantum computing for real world business solutions. And with me is Rob Laskowski, uh, the CEO of Quantum Computing, and Hunter Gaylor, uh, who's going to be uh, co hosting with me on this interview. And so let's just start, Bob, with just tell us a little bit about the quantum chip and bring us up to date with what the company's sure. been doing since last uh, time we talked. And it's great to be back. Yeah. Uh, I know you had Bill McGann in the last yeah. segment that we yeah. did this, and, and Bill kind of went deep into the technology. And I want to kind of bring it back up to the talking about the company a little bit more and, and telling you about what we're doing. So um, since we last met, we launched our uh, subscription service to our Dirac uh, Entropy Quantum Computer. So the public now or the or paying customers actually have access to the quantum computer via the web. And we're actually executing on some uh, contracts with that right now. I think we announced the Rabobank contract uh, uh, during Bill's time here. And, um, and we're marching down that path, right? So we're actually commercially in the marketplace today. And we're, we're executing on that. But we've also begun to roll out some other applications besides just the quantum computing piece, which I'm sure we'll be talking about today. Yeah. Well, in one of those, uh, you mentioned Rabobank in the past, and, and uh, uh, Bill talked about that. Right. That's cybersecurity. So there's a huge play for marketability. Can you talk to where your company is in launching sure. applications in the cybersecurity space? Yeah, you bet. In fact, with Rabobank, we're, we're actually doing um, fraud detection. So it's a different form of cybersecurity. It's actually looking at transactions to be able to determine if they're fraudulent or not. And they do you know, millions of transactions. So it's got to be done quite um, robustly. On the cybersecurity piece, what's really interesting, it's got applications across the uh, spectrum of, of domains, right? Not just fintech and financial applications, but it's got infrastructure implications to it, um, general business uses to it. So there's a lot of different ways that cybersecurity, as we know, it's a very topical thing, you know, impacts our daily life. Quantum technologies are going to be able to make that life so much more secure than what we're currently de doing today. And arguably, we are doing that. We're ju just launching off our cybersecurity product, which is going to enhance that capability. It's actually going to bring quantum technologies into the cybersecurity space. Mm -hmm. Wow. And quantum sensing. We talked a little bit about quantum sensing last time. Can you talk to a little bit uh, about where that's going to fit in into the yeah. market? Um, let me just kind of cap off on the cyber side. I, I believe from a company standpoint, that's really going to make our mark in the commercial space today. I think the cyber piece of this is going to be huge because of the, just the vulnerabilities we have. Um, but equally as opportunistic for us, or at least an opportunity, not necessarily opportunistic, is moving into the sensing space and, and applying quantum technologies to things like medical imaging. Being able to use low power to get to do um, X, you know, what x-rays can do today or, or CT scans, you'll be able to do that with our quantum imaging technology, effectively using a LiDAR type of technology. Um, and there's other types of sensing technologies. So we talk about LiDAR. LiDAR for autonomous vehicles or for uh, a whole myriad of uses, but the most popular one that people to think about is, is of course, the um, um, autonomous driving vehicles. And being, being able to see further, more fidelity around the imaging, um, better speeds, uh, acquisition of, a, of the uh, image in front of you and processing that information, that's all quantum photonics or, or, or quantum uh, LIDAR capability powered by photonics. Um, other types of imaging and sensing types of capabilities we have that we're going into the marketplace with are um, the ability to determine um, uh, stress fractures or weaknesses in metals, for example. Mm. So we have something called a vibrometer, which can actually, at distance, determine the um, uh, weaknesses in a bridge. Okay. So for infrastructure applications, this would be a great technology. Of course, the, where I came out of with Homeland Security, it was all about infrastructure. And the, you know, the, the road infrastructure or aircraft wings and things like this, those types of infrastructures are, they fail, and they, you know, the more we can, we can get insight into them, obviously the safer they can be. Yeah. And, and some other corporate development that, that uh, we read about is your uh, random number generator, or your right. quantum random number generator. Right. Can you talk a little bit about, uh, walk us through what that is and, and what the potential market applications sure. are for something like that? So uh, that's our, I'd say our first, you know, outside of our co computational capability, our Dirac, that's our first real product in the quantum space uh, outside of our com uh, computational capability. A quantum random number generator, so random number generators have been around for a long time, right? And they're used for security, they're used for simulations in the financial markets and, and the risk management markets, but they're not really random. There's a, pseudo, there's a pseudo component to that. So pseudo random number generators still do a great job in the marketplace today, but they reach their limit. 
So for folks who are really doing, you know, the hardcore financial analysis that's going on, you know, developing simulations on financial modeling, need to have true random number generators. And with our quantum capability, we've developed a truly random quantum random number generator. That number will never repeat in our lifetime. Hmm. Oh, wow. So it may not mean anything <laughs> to the average that. individual, but to the people who are really, you know, the, like I said, in the simulations market, uh, risk management in cybersecurity or in encryption, it really is very meaningful. Yeah. So we're an entrant in that marketplace. Um, it's a big market. I, you know, I'm not going to make my co company's business around this, but clearly it's a great opportunity for us to get into the marketplace. No, this kind of sounds like something like a casino would use, like exactly. gaming. Right, gaming, exactly. Brokerage firms. That's a, that's yeah. a perfect application for it. Yeah. So anywhere you have these sort of randomness types of you know, events, um, they have to be generated by something that a random number generator is really predicated on. Yeah, the casinos, you know, the, the house is now really always going That's right, <laughs> that's right. Or it becomes more fair. Right, or it becomes, there you go. Oh, that's that's interesting. That's right. That's now, right. about the Dirac Entropy Quantum Computer. Yes. Explain that and how does that give an edge? So, um, we've talked a little bit about quantum computing. I know Bill went into it pretty deeply probably the last time he was here. But we talked about the differences. So, our competitors, such as the IBM, they're, they're going for gate model computers using superconductive. They have to be in a pristine environment. That's why they have to be really virtually absolute zero. The atoms have to be frozen. There's a, there's a, um, a, a big uh, investment in maintaining that infrastructure so you can do the calculations. And there's a lot of error correction that has to go on just because of the way the calculations go. Um, because they don't want to have any noise, right? Conversely, with photonics, noise is our friend. We need a noisy environment. The entropy in the environment is what powers the um, quantum computing aspects of what we do. So that, therefore, allows us to be room temperature in a small, a very scalable uh, device using, you know, wall plug, 110 volt um, power, and we use less than 80 watts of power to do our computations. So that's, so comparing the two just at that level is pretty interesting. However, what we're already doing that they can't do, and frankly nobody else is doing, is doing large scale problems. So we can do 11,000 qubit problems, 11,000 variables today, right? Non-error corrected, because there's no error correction required. So 11,000 qubits to us is 11,000 qubits. Whereas in the classical, more you know, the, the uh, gate model computer, uh, 100 qubits might be one or two or 10 error corrected qubits. So it gives us the, that capability of being able to do much bigger problems, more complex problems today. And that's exactly what we've launched. Can you highlight, you know, based on that information, where you are in the market? What are some potential milestones that, that you think that your company can sure. reach? And whether that's the commercially viable applications that you spoke about or some potentially strategic partnerships, governments, yep. uh, large corporations. Talk to us a little bit about where you think that's that's going to go? Yeah, so, you know, since we've uh, done the acquisition, we've moved very aggressively into the marketplace and we've become a full stack quantum computer, as I've mentioned before. Um, what that enables us to do is to be not just a computing company, but an applications, a quantum applications and solutions company. So we have a very diverse portfolio that we can go into the marketplace with. And that's exactly what we're doing today. So I mentioned some of the sensing technologies. Those are applications that we're moving into the marketplace today for, for, for sale. Right? So, you know, the milestones you talk about, right? So it'd be great if we could sell this, you know, some of these applications to the federal government, particularly on the cybersecurity side. You can imagine that places like, you know, uh, Homeland Security and other, you know, agencies that are dealing in very sensitive information would want to have those types of encryption capabilities. Similarly, banks would want the same thing. So for me, making a sale to a large bank for uh, our cybersecurity capability in the next year would be a great milestone. Um, getting government contracts. You know, clearly we've set up a, um, a government subsidiary that we can mm -hmm. just do government only work because that's the way the government works. They want to make sure that they have a sort of a, you know, um, a clean organization they can do business with. And by that I mean, you know, one that can really stand up to all the requirements the government has to, um, to meet their security requirements. So we have a government subsidiary for that. That allows us to be able to sell to the government. So imagine this year for us, a major milestone would be at least one or two federal contracts that would be able to go either for the entropy quantum computer or one of the applications. The LIDAR would be very interesting for us to be able to, to get into the government. So there's a number of applications there. So um, I, I see us being you know, fully pointed in the commercial space um, and also focused on the government space. So we're really diversifying in the area. I think we're going to have a very good year for us in terms of the commercial applications and, and uh, you know, getting the quantum technologies in the commercial space.
Now this definitely sounds like it could be a very pivotal year for the company and for quantum computing it is. in general, for the technology. So it's, if I may, just to kind of build on that point. So the marketplace has really turned around. Mm -hmm. um, uh, you know, there was some skepticism about quantum computing, and I, I still think there's some laggards out there, folks who don't believe that they're really, you know, quantum computing is going to be real. Mm -hmm. But more and more folks we're talking to are less concerned about the technology mm -hmm. and more concerned about the results. They're buying into the fact that quantum computing is actually going to deliver results that they can't get out of traditional computing. And once they cross that Rubicon, there's just no going back. Right? They know they can do something better, they can get better results with it, and that's what they're expecting, and that's exactly what we're delivering. Well, and has there ever been a technology where there haven't been skeptics in the beginning? No, never. So, <laughs> you know, I mean, you, you can't. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, you, Bob, thank you so much. Hunter, yeah, thank, thank you, you as well. Thank so you, interesting. Thank you, Thanks for the update. I appreciate yep. it.